so coming straight to the to, uh, anatomy of the pedicle i think um, it's a very basic thing that below lies the nerve root above lies nothing medially lies the thecal sac and laterally lies nothing okay so if you have to have to air air superior and air lateral don't air ideally uh, now this is important in the lumbar spine uh, you will see that uh, the area of contention is a very small area this is the only contentious area after that there is a receptacle of bone waiting for the screw to walk in okay so what you see from the back is a huge surface so you have to envisage where the tube lies looking at the surface it's like you have to tap around and see where is the solid column underneath your floor just like that and that's where the guesswork lies and that's where you know if, uh, all this uh, kind of uh, the, uh, gizmos around this go so <clears throat> this is how the funnel of the pedicle looks there's a very big floor and you have to figure out where the, where the head of this pedicle will be and that cones in into a very narrow na path, relatively narrow path. It's relatively narrow, mind you, it's like 7-8 millimeters, sometimes even more. But it's relatively narrow because the screw that you're aiming to put is a 6mm screw, right? So then it becomes cut to cut, but for a probe, it's not that narrow. So get that, get your head around it. Once you pass that initial 1.5 centimeters, 15-18 millimeters, it's a big receptacle of bone and you can't then miss it. Okay, so if you miss this, you probably miss this. So the trick is just to get your first centimeter and a half through. Okay, so we'll uh, get more descriptive about this. We'll skip this. Uh, uh, what about the entry point? Uh, a relations we discussed. Yeah, as a surgeon, when you look at an x-ray, for the next uh, patient that you will operate on, instrument on, always look at this x-ray like that. This is how it should look at you. When you see the x-ray, don't see the x-ray, this face, etc. You see how the pedicle looks, where is the spinous process, iska spinous process, to ye pedicles. This is the transfer, it looks like an owl as you can see. There's a nose below, there are two eyes and there are ears. Okay, and that's the face. So remember that this pedicle belongs to that spinous process of this lamina. You should be able to vis you know, visualize laminae also. You should be able to visualize the facetal joints on the sides. On the lateral view, you should see how the angulation of the pedicle is a superior and inferior articular process. That's how you should look at an x-ray. It's a nice cute slide to show that. Um, okay, as far as position is concerned, the, you have to put the patient in the neutral position. Try not to hyperlordose. We normally like two, two, horizon, two vertical bolsters, but you can do any position you like because the screw passage is independent of the position. It's independent of the x-ray, as you'll see uh, as we get more descriptive. All right. Now, what is the entry point of uh, the pedicle screw? So, the entry point of a pedicle screw is the base of the superior articular process from sacrum to C1. If you want to pass a pedicle screw, find the superior articular process, go to the base, that's the entry point. Okay. As simple as that, just keep applying it at every level. You'll see on the caddies and you'll know what I'm saying. So, if that's the, that's the uh, you know, if you want to pass a screw in this bone, uh, you have to dissect. We are all used to dissecting so much. Okay, I'm going to repeat this on the cadaver, but I still want to repeat this here. There's a big flesh of bone, uh, I mean flesh of muscle that's covering this. We all used to doing laminectomy, so we dissect so much, and then we don't know what to do. Poke your finger in and look at the bumps. So while you're operating, look at the look for the bumps, and you'll find two ridges of bones on top and at the bottom. So this is the spinous process, and you want to pass the screw in this bone. The superior articular process of this one will be higher not lower. So you'll find one bump here and one bump here, choose the higher bump. After you choose the higher bump, you softly dissect around it and identify that bump, hold the spinous process and move it and you'll see which part of that bump belongs to this bone because this bump belongs to two bones. Okay? Always the facets are like this. So if I'm L4, my superior facet will be out and my inferior facet will be in. Okay? So if I'm holding L4, the outer part will move of the upper. Okay? So when I'm holding the L4, I'll know what moves and that is the part of the superior or that's the superior angular process of L4. Bite at the base and pass your screw. Okay, so that's, those are the steps. So these fancy, uh, you know, entry points are not that critical. There should be just two entry points in the lumbar spine. One is what I showed you. And the other is when you don't want to mess with that facet joint. When you don't want to cut that facet joint, don't want to bite that facet because you want to preserve it because there's no screw going further up. If you're not fusing the level. So, at the upper end of your construct, you cannot use this entry point. At every other level, you can use this entry point. But at the upper level, so I'm doing an L4-5 or an L3-4-5 fixation, I have to spare the L2-3 joint. And if I bite that, 
I'm going to damage the L3, L2-3 joint and at the end I'm going to get a, after 5 years, a kyphosis there because the facet has been destabilized. So there the entry point is the same but on the outside. So it's the same, base of the articular process but instead of biting here, I'll, I'll you know, go on the outside of the ridge and go from there and angle a bit more medially. So I save that joint. Okay. So uh, those are the only two entry points in the, in the lumbar spine. Now what about how do, how do you, um, you know, once the entry point is determined, so sacrum also same thing. Once the entry point is determined, again this whole thing about 15 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 35 degree, 32 degree. Do you have a protractor? What do you have in, in drop? How can you make out 10 and 13 degrees? For the life of me, you cannot. Okay, if you do also, if your patient is slightly placed like this, how are you going to do it? Right? So, all your coordinates should be based on the spine that you see with your own eyes. Not what you see on the x-ray or not how the patient is placed or whether the ass is sticking out or not. Okay? So, if he's placed like this, you're now worried about supero inferior or autocephalide, uh, 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 you know, trajectory and mediolateral trajectory. So, coming to autocephalide trajectory, once you have your entry point, you set your, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, the tocha on the entry point you want to go perpendicular to the lamina and that's going to be the pedicle. The pedicle in the lumbar spine is always perpendicular to the lamina. Okay, so if the lamina is like this, you're going to be like that. If the lamina was like this, you're going to be like this. In fact, if the lamina is like this, you want to be like this. It's got nothing to do with perpendicular to the flow. So in the sacrum here, the trajectory will be like that. L5 will be like this. If you cannot identify the lamina well, dissect the transverse processes. You can be perpendicular to the transverse process also. So, transverse versus the lamina lie in the same plane, you have to be perpendicular to that. Okay? Then, mediolateral. Always air medially in the lumbar spine because there's tons of flesh here, tons of mass or muscle that prevents you from medial angulation. So, invariably in the lumbar spine, the, the problem is going through lateral because you didn't medialize. Okay? Now, if you see the anatomy of the pedicle, when you're doing a medial angulation, you have to be really medial to get into the canal. And that is never possible with that much amount of uh, mass in the lumbar spine. Okay, because it's only 15 mm, right? The tube is very small. To actually traverse the tube, you got to go really too medial. And hence, always aim medially, always air to point medially, but use the spinous process as your coordinate. So if the spinous process is like this, in comparison to that, I'm going to go medial. Why is this important? Because the patient could be placed a bit like this, or he could have scoliosis, degen scoliosis. If he has that, then medial is in relation to the spinous process. Okay, so once you get that right, the third is that, which is the most important, and that's, that's the message of my uh, talk, is that the pedicle wants, to, wants your probe to go in. The pedicle is a path of least resistance. If you go out or if you burst a pedicle, you have done something wrong. The pedicle is not wrong. The pedicle has two cortices or, or surrounded by a cortex and a cancellous, the cancellous bone is very, very narrow, but it's cancellous bone still. So when you pass a probe, if you do it gently, it has it is going to walk you through. It will say, oh, I'm getting stuck. So you try. No, I'm getting stuck. Got it? So the tip of your probe should be your eyes and that should lead you through the pedicle. And always when you're passing a pedicle through, your probe should have a nice big ball to control. It can't be a flimsy guy which you're tapping. You, the other hand should be rested on the patient's back. So it, the, it prevents this from thrusting in. The other hand is, so the left hand is preventing the pedicle from, pedicle probe from going in. It's actually holding back. And this one, 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Not even like that. 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. That kind of movement. And walk yourself through. You're feeling stuck. Figure out, ah, I think I'm less medial compared to the sinus process. Let me go a bit more medial. Or let me go a little more cordial. And it will keep giving way. And it will walk you through. If you go to 20 or 30, then you're set. The other ways of knowing that you're inside other than this path of least resistance is that every time you go in, you try to pull out a bit and it will give you a firm feel. Or when you pull the probe out, there will be a gush of blood with fat nodules, like fat particles, the bone marrow. Okay? If you perforate it, there will be no blood bleeder coming back out. The third is use a ball tip probe and feel all the ends of the pedicle and then you know that you're inside, all the walls of the pedicle. You normally don't need to tap. Uh, and after that you pass the screw. Just a few words on thoracic screw. This is going to be much better demonstrated on the cadavers. But, um, so thoracic screw as you can see the, you know, clear cut difference in anatomy is that the bone is conical. It is not a receptacle. It's not a big wide bone to accept your screw. 
So here your margin of error really cuts down. Not only because of that, but because of these unfriendly hooks hanging around. Which are not there in the lumbar spine. So in the thoracic spine, you have to get that right. If you even go there, you are going to hit a IVC or hit an aorta or a zygos or something like that. Okay. Now, it, the other thing that you see in the thoracic spine is that the transverse process, the so-called transverse process, actually moves back upward. So the spinous process is back. In the lumbar spine, the TP is like this. Here, the TP is like that. So it's going to actually come in the way of your angulation. Okay. The third thing is on a lateral view in the thoracic spine. Uh, in the lateral view, the pedicle is not parallel to the body. As you will see here, in the lumbar spine, the pedicle is parallel to the body. In the thoracic spine, the pedicle is pointed down. Okay, so these are the three clear cut differences, and those have to fix in your head when you pass a thoracic screw. Then look at it from behind the spinous process and the transverse process are looking up at you. The bone is coning down inside and the pedicle is pointing down towards the caudal end. Now once you have that right, once again the you know entry point remains the same based on the superior articular process because this is more sense than uh, that. The problem is that the superior articular process is hidden here. As you can see, the superior articular process, so if this is T10 and I have to pass a T10 screw, I cannot see because in the lumbar spine you had two halves facing you. The, the facet was aligned like this. Here the facet is aligned like this. So the superior articular, inferior articular process of T9 is actually covering the superior articular process of T10. So I can't identify it. And hence you got to look at look for the notch. So when you when you actually dissect back, as you start moving your pottery upward, you'll find a notch there. Which again better than the Mohn models, you'll find it on the cadaver. There's a notch and then there's the other bump. So you have a bump and a notch and a bump. That's the entry point which is going to match with the uh, base of the superior articular process. If you're still unsure, just osteotomize the inferior articular process of the superior vertebra. So make, make an osteotome and cut that much. And you'll see the superior articular process of T10 staring at you. Go to the base of that. Okay. So uh, in reality, there are three ways of passing a thoracic pedicle screw. All three are pretty simple. Uh, uh, this is the first way which I was explaining. That's the anatomic method of passing a pedicle screw where you go into that notch or you in, uh, excise the inferior articular process, make the entry point which is, co which is going to coincide with that. Uh, so it's going to coincide, yeah, keep that. Coincide with the actual pedicle, but because you know that the pedicle is pointed inferiorly, here when you do your cordocephaloid angulation, you don't stay perpendicular to the lamina, but go slightly caudal. Because here the ped uh, pedicle does not walk in perpendicular to the lamina, it goes slightly caudally. Okay, you have to converge adequately. How do you know your angle of convergence? Always over converge. Okay, uh, the spinous process tells you which is the angle of convergence. Initially, you can use what is called the gear shift technique because here the convergence becomes a bit of an issue. You cannot measure angles. So, normally your probe is like this. Pass your probe. So, if the patient is sleeping in front of you like this, no, the, pass the probe pointed out so it won't slip into the canal. Okay. Pass just the first one centimeter, say 10 mm like that in the thoracic spine. Then pull the probe out and then pass the probe like that. Not like that. Okay, so the gear shift technique specifically demands that your initial entry is like this. And then you don't put the next entry like this. The next entry is like that. And that's how you negotiate and get into the pedicle. Once again, if you get the feel right, it does not let you down. The feel never lets you down. So I'm, you know, over and over saying, learn to use, uh, learn to pass freehand pedicle screws because that, that is the safest method of passing a pedicle screw. Not using x-rays because x-rays will always let you down. Your feel of your hand will never let you down. The next method, so the problem here is that the screw goes through the lovely true pedicle. So you get a very good hold, but all the screws are sloped up like this. So all your screws will be like that. So when you actually put the rod and you want to marry this screw to a straight lumbar screw, it can become a problem. So surgeons want to pass a surgical pedicle screw which goes straight and just like you heard Sumit saying C2 pedicle and C2 uh, uh, par screw, similarly here the surgical pedicle screw actually cuts through the pedicle and goes straight down. It doesn't follow the pedicle like this but it cuts through the pedicle and goes straight down. So the entry point as you can see on the on the, on the uh, par point is a bit lower, right? So if this was your entry point 
and you have to pass the screw down, here the entry point is a bit lower. So the same thing, but about a few mm lower. It's traditionally the entry, uh, 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 you know, the point of contact between the outer one third of the superior facet and the upper one third of the transverse process. And actually, in the bone, you'll find a little ridge there. And you just bite on that ridge, you create a, you know, create a cancellous bone and go through. Here, the angle will be perpendicular. It will not be, uh, you know, uh, going uh, pointed south. If you don't know both of these, there's a third method, which makes use of the costo vertebral junction. So here, there's uh, unlike the lumbar spine, there's a big piece of bone, the rib, which uh, uh, which um, marries the transverse process here, costo transverse junction. Then there's a gap here, and then it sits on the costo vertebral junction. So here you pass a screw as though you're doing an intermedullary nailing of the transverse process. So you bite the transverse process here and go right through the transverse process. It's actually the transverse process and rib combination that you're going through. Then it comes out, it goes in nicely and it gives way because there's an empty space here. And then it again hits the bone, which is the bone between the which is the bone made up of the rib and the vertebral body, and it goes in like that. This is a very safe screw because it's like out and out. But it's not a pedicle screw, it's hold is bad and it's like that. So all your screws are here, this will be like that. And hence you can't marry a transverse process or a, uh, uh, you know, uh, this screw to one of your regular screws. So it's a salvage screw, don't use it as your regular option. And that's the in-out-in technique of passing the thoracic screw. And just to show you what an anatomic and a uh, surgical pedicle screw looks like, that's what they would look like. Uh, in a, so that, that you should have in the back of your mind. And uh, you should forget uh, these trajectories because they are impossible to know. Okay, so I think those are the entry points and uh, that's all I want to say. I think time is up also, right? There are some salvage methods, etc. There are some tips, like if you are struggling initially, like I told you, you can osteotomize the inferior articular process. That way you can make a little laminotomy. So if you if you are not sure, boss, where is this pedicle and am I going to go to medially, the thoracic spine, they are passing a T, T4 screw. Then it's, a, it's fair to take so much bone off to a laminotomy and with a thin pen field actually feel the medial wall of the pedicle. And once you feel that, you're pretty safe. So that's one method. The other is that if you've mucked up a screw, so you passed a screw and it went out. If you want to repass that screw, make sure it's done after the rest of the surgery is over, which means laminectomy and everything you do. So let that be an open screw. Okay, so typically when you're passing pedicle screws, you're following up with some kind of a laminectomy. If you're not, you may want to do it here because you will find that the foot or the uh, you know the uh, footprint of the pedicle is actually very broad. From the top, you can't make out, but actually it's very broad. So the minute you do a laminectomy, you find oh, I was here and I was. So basically, if you have uh, screwed up a screw, there's still a, at least one more good chance of passing the screw well. Okay. Now the last thing is the sacrum screw. I want to tell you just one or two tips because the sacrum screw is a big problem. It's a big fat cancellous bone. It's a problem of plenty, not a problem of how to aim. Wherever you aim, you're going to get bone because it's a big fat bone. But all the bone is cancellous bone. So you can have only one shot at it, just like in the ACDF. One shot, you, if it goes bad, there's going to be a big khadda there and the next screw is going to be dealer. And it has to be a bicortical screw. Any screw in the sacrum that's not bicortical, I swear to you, is going to walk out in a few days or a few months. It is absolutely useless because it's connecting the spine to the pelvis and it better be. So ideally you should have ilium screws also but if you're not doing ilium screws, your screw should by default without any exception hit here. Not even here, by cortical at that promontory. And hence when you pass that screw, you do freehand but check on the C arm whether you're hitting the promontory. Because it's a question of a few millimeters and you can have a bad screw. Uh, when you pass the thing, you will hit the distal cortex you have to pass that distal cortex using a hammer pull out. Make sure that you under tap the distal cortex. Otherwise, you, pa you pass, uh, perforate the distal cortex. Then you get a 6 mm screw and start passing it, and it sits on the distal cortex and starts moving. It doesn't want to penetrate, and you create one big khatta. So, after you do the thing, after you pass the distal cortex, take a 4 mm tap, tap that distal cortex. The tap will walk through your hole, but it will catch that distal cortex. You can even tap it with a 5 mm tap. And oversize your screw just a bit so you get a few threads across the cortex and converge it. Don't be random because here there's a lot of bone, you can put it anywhere. But the minute you the screw comes out from here, roots come out like this and they go out like this. So that's the ala of the sacrum. If your screw is hitting, coming out from the ala, you're going to have a post-op radiculopathy. I've had an incident where I had to redo the screw post-op. It was an L4-5 or L5-S1 T-lift and uh, he started getting L5 radiculopathy post-op. 
and uh, the only thing was that the screw was not converged it was sitting there rather than there on the CT I refused to believe that that was a problem because I had passed quite a few of those before and had gotten away but the guys injected that nerve and there was pain relief that's when I got convinced we went in just took the screw out and we medialized it and the uh, pain disappeared so those are the tips about the sacrum screw to medialize sometimes the iliac crest comes in the way you sometimes have to go trans iliac crest but medialize adequately